Hello, this is R. Rats with Team 4545 League analyzing the game between KW Winner and Truxton. This was played in team event number 53 in the fifth round. So let's have a look. Okay, just a little offbeat system. Black should have nothing to fear with this. Okay. One drawback with black trading the dark squared bishops is that right now his dark squared bishop is his better piece. I'm not saying it's a bad choice, but it's better bishop than the light squared one, so black's going to have to deal with that. I see this motive often where something gets exchanged on, a bishop gets exchanged on either g3 or b3 for either a knight or a bishop, and the other side gets the open rook file. see that quite a lot in these videos. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to question this move uh, for one for a couple reasons. Uh, I don't think it's the best move. Let's just take it back first. Well, let's leave it here a second. First off, it's true that Black will play this move in the Chagorin defense. Uh, and the modern theorists always frowned on Chagorin's defense because it blocked the Black Sea Pawn. But one drawback with this being a Chagorin defense is that this Black Bishop is shut in. Normally, in just about every Chagorin defense line, that bishop gets out and gets into play. Not always, but mostly. And it usually comes out to, to g4. So, um, probably what's good for black to play is uh, a move like b6. What b6 does is it prepares, it prepares bishop b7, c5 at some point. Eventually knight bd7 will be played. Uh, and it's a it's a whole new game, and I think there's going to be some exam some positions in here where maybe Black would ra rather not have had that knight on c6, and we'll see when we get there. Okay, now Black finally t decides, well, I'm going to take this off, and okay, so now White has the open file, and I guess White's uh, optimistic about his chances now. But there's one thing about this white player, KW Winner, that I've noticed in some of these videos is he moves too fast. And he's going to move too fast again in this game. And he outranks his opponent, but at the same time, just because you're rated higher doesn't mean you're going to play a better game, especially when you're not taking your time. And Black, on the other hand, really takes his time. He gets some time trouble rather quickly here. So Black was really getting into this game and figuring out what to do. So white, meantime, just continued with uh, with playing quick moves, and eventually it's going to catch up to him. Okay. So black at some point needs to think about getting getting these guys into play, and I still like the idea of trying to fee and it and get it on, and get it on the long diagonal. Okay. Now this move might be a little premature. But what it does is it does gain a tempo because white stopped and put the bishop on d3 first. So credit to black for waiting for black or white to move the bishop to d3 before doing it. But what this does is it gives it gives white some opportunities to uh, strike in the center with his pawns and and usually when black does this, it's like in Queen's Gambit accepted positions, he's able to play c5, and we've already uh, discussed that c5 is just not feasible here. And it, also b6 is getting less and less likely because because there'll be some pins on that knight on c6. So as far as I'm concerned, black has a couple problem pieces here that he's got to figure out a way to deal with, and he's used a lot of time getting this position. So. Queen d6, this is a move that's often played in Chagorin, uh type positions, and what black is clearly playing for here is e5. Uh, if he can get e5 in, that will solve uh, a lot of his opening div uh, difficulties here, because his dark uh, light squared bishop is trapped, or stuck at home. And this might have been the point to go ahead and try, try e5 now. Uh, it has some point to it. Okay, obviously we're happy if uh, if White captures because we'll just liquidate the liquidate the queens and then do a little more liquidating here, and Black has nothing to fear, right? 
he's get, got uh, finally got an open line for his bishop. But White's not going to be so cooperative. He's not going to take on e5. He's probably going to play d5, which he did in the game. And Black's not without resources here as well. He he has a number of moves, candidate moves here, knight e7, and to the idea to be to f try to follow up with uh, with uh, c6. He could try knight e5, but he's got to watch out. One of the problems with knight a5, you have to watch out for a timely b4. Now White's certainly not able to do it now, but but in some positions maybe he could. Maybe White stops and parks the bishop here. Okay, let's just take a look. And this is just a fantasy line. I'm not saying it's forced. I'm just trying to get to the point. Well, you still can't play it. The queen's on it. But I don't know. You know, black's okay here. So knight, a, knight a5 may have been a move. Uh, and then knight b4 is possible. Then you got some pressure on d5. You've Black's got three crawling on it. White has three defending it. And white should be okay. But, you know, there's ways to complicate uh, there's ways to complicate this position and it's up to the players to take take the, those lines a little further but anyway uh, I guess Black felt that he, he just needed to be sure that nothing went wrong on G6 and, I mean on that diagonal and maybe he had a point here maybe I missed something let's just go back if E5 what if Knight E4 well shouldn't be any problem uh, we can the threat is knight takes knight and queen takes but but it's black's move he can deal with it how about knight takes now we gotta now we have to stop and deal with that and at least now we've now we've got the bishop ready to come out to e4 or f5 rather hitting e4 so anyway not saying all this is forced but it's just an idea for Truxton and KW Winter to look at on their own but here it gets a little more potent for White now he gets gets that that pawn center in now comes the break and maybe it's a move too early and uh, again I'm I'm looking at knight e7 being the first move I would consider but Truxton surprises me with this and 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 uh, uh, I believe KW Winner just didn't analyze and, and gave Truxton credit or whatever for spending time. But I believe White comes out of this uh, just fine. Uh, I looked at it a little bit and I couldn't find I couldn't find anything wrong with just taking. Now it's up to Black to prove he has something for the pawn because Black has sacrificed the pawn to reach this position. And all I could find uh, were some temporary sacrifices. Okay, now you got to play f5. And now, now the threat is to win everything, right? Rook takes knight, so White just starts defending, and and you don't have to take it now. But but really, what's the follow up? Um, I don't know. C five just doesn't smell right. But it's giving it's giving Black uh, or White a a protected or not a protected, but a passed pawn. And once the Black Queen runs out of there. There could be a discovered check that could haunt black. So you, you just need to get rid of that knight, maybe. Rook takes. And, you know, black's getting getting his pieces out, but white's, white's grabbed a pawn for this. And I'm not all, all that convinced that, uh, that uh, black has enough compensation for it. Just bring the queen back to oh, e3 or e2. e3's fine. Now, if, if white checks... Uh, or black checks so shouldn't be a problem if black tries to uh, well, let's get the king off that diagonal once and for all tries to pin the queen well you know black just castles out of danger and I'm still not sure white has enough or black has enough compensation here um, if queen b4 check just offer a queen trade and I don't think black has enough but anyway let's take a look at how much time KW t did take on his move. Well, he took a couple of minutes, but it's back up. I got to give him credit. His clock went down two minutes and five seconds, or one minute and five seconds. So he took nearly two minutes because he got 45 seconds back. And his move isn't bad, uh, but this helps Black out because now Black solved his opening difficulties. 
got to trade that off before the pawns lost and now even though the bishop's got an open diagonal it doesn't really have a square to go to so black is stuck trying to figure out how to get those queen side, the last of queen side pieces out and then white says well I want to attack the king I've got that open file and and this is becomes the defining moment of the game uh, because of opposite, ca opposite side castling ideally what you like to see if you're a spectator you like to see both sides going after each other's king and that's essentially what happens Truxton does uh, st start an energetic assault with his pawns uh, the game is probably about even here and and maybe white just slightly ahead because his attack just looks a little closer than what black has especially with these guys not yet not yet developed but black surprises he starts getting getting his guys out there he gets the bishop move uh, maneuvered so now the other rook can come over if if it's able to and g4 b5 yeah you know, like i say white black's getting all all kinds of activity here now his pawns are menacing going to be menacing white pieces drive them both back so uh the alternative well now king g7 is no alternative you just come down and check okay never mind okay so kick there and now kick that one you know and now look black's really his positions come a long way in just a few short moves and and uh He's got a decent, decent game, and a very interesting pawn sacrifice. Uh, just opens up those files. Okay, now all these, both these files are open up for black at the price of a pawn. That's not a a bad uh, price to pay. And if anything, white can put the queen here and be forking uh, pawns. But he's got to watch out, watch his king too. White's white may get menacing over here, but he chooses chooses this move. And it's fine. It does attack the bishop, so White has to stop and defend that. And and uh, I don't know about Rook D3. Was there anything else? It's hard to say. Uh, King C2 just almost looks shaky. Bishop A4 and getting a lot of checks in. So you know, here one White's all ready to play G5 and capture on on uh, h7 or sacrifice the exchange on h5 all of a sudden uh, black says your attack is stopped and mine is still going and so it's a remarkable play by black to, to be able to do this uh, from an undeveloped queen side in just a few short moves so you got to give uh, kudos to Truxton for finding finding this plan he made the best of what he had and I still think the game's about even strategically uh, White has some double pawns, uh, but and he's a pawn ahead. But the double pawn really isn't isn't a pawn ahead. So, uh, but the but the white attack is just ground to a halt, and Black's is still in full swing. Black's got all kinds of of play here. You know, threats of Bishop B5, maybe Bishop A4 at the right time, uh, just to try to uh, expose the king a little bit. So he chose this moment to regain his pawn. And it's with checks, so you can't fault that. And now we got to get the queen out of there. So now it's even material. And and earlier I was talking about the bishops, how trading off the black squared bishop might not be good because uh, white would be left with a better bishop. But now, as it turns out, white it doesn't have a better bishop. Look at all of his pawns. Four of the five pawns are on white squares. So uh, black will want to keep his bishop on the board as long as he possibly can because... Uh, the endings favoring will favor black if we get down to a minor piece ending those those pawns are weak okay so it'd be great to have a knight versus bishop in this ending and then black re or white revives his attack uh, yeah here's a point where i might have considered king g7 but one drawback with it is rook h2 and you just chase it out of there but but i don't know you know let's just take a look okay rook here now let's just burn a move for black and but we'll play a good move put it put it over there and now we give the check and he comes back and we play g5 now the knight has to go to h5 and to shield everything but with so much wood traded uh, maybe uh, white doesn't have enough to attack black with uh, I don't know we can see let's just try it takes and takes uh, ideally you'd like to somehow get that bishop activated with a timely d6 
but you know it seems to me like black could just take with his uh, take with his queen unless white has something with this sacrifice I don't know king takes looks awful shaky uh, but you can just go in the corner and and laugh at black laugh at white what's white's follow-up is looks like he's probably gonna have to exchange queens well no he's got g6 ouch okay let's see okay so take the bishop I said it looks shaky but let's figure it out okay uh, King e6 maybe white has a draw here maybe maybe white has better you know this knight gets into play Eww. I don't know let's see check and maybe maybe the white attack finally runs out of steam like I say it's it's interesting but it didn't isn't what happened Queen d6 uh, holds the fort just fine too but anyway now he comes back and white still got to deal with uh, or black still have to deal with possible g5 but it's not so bad with the queen on h4 because white's not primed to sacrifice an exchange so black just continues with what he was doing and I, I don't quite understand bishop a2 uh, maybe there was some oh well, yeah I do understand it the threat was queen b4 and taking the bishop so he puts on a square where his knight is covering it and here's black spending all his time working working out everything and there's white just moving on about a minute minute to move or using his increment and white's holding on but but uh, eventually it's going to catch up to him you'll see here shortly this is the point yeah now that's just a, a great move it caught me by surprise because it wasn't something I was looking for I generally don't like to give up two pieces for the rook and what white does is he he should have taken and tried his luck with two pieces versus the rook because not taking just puts him a pawn down and he has no hope but if let's just take a look I'll show you what I mean okay granted uh, black's got some imposing kingside pawns but they haven't gotten started yet and white has time to re-coordinate things and make sure that uh, the, hat the hatches are battened down. You might have to play a little defensive chess here at first to get everything covered, but then uh, black tri white tries to re-coordinate and stop the pawns from advancing, and white has does have an extra piece, even if they're not as powerful. Now, how would white re-coordinate? Well, ideally, if you go into defensive mode, uh, bishop c4 and, and b3, okay uh, then white only has h1 to, to come into and the queen can always come back to h1 if it has to or if you keep the pawn on b3 the knight can come back to d1 there's all, all kinds of ways to conduct this defense if you're if you're white and make black prove that he can win with a rook and two pawns versus two pieces I think that would have been white's best choice but I guess he just didn't uh, uh, have the patience for it but this just pretty much concedes a clean pawn to, to black and it's it's now a black game and white continues to play quickly and now there's new pressure coming up the threat is queen takes knight so white's got to deal with that and now the knight comes in to play he's headed for f4 and that's a killer square for the knight and here uh I was looking at this my first instinct is to play knight f4 or play f6 kicking the rook out then play knight f4 one or the other but actually knight f4 four works right away because if black def, uh, plays this he, he, he just loses to this trick the rook's under attack and and b2 is in deep trouble uh, white has to play here and then you know this 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 looks just so bad for white uh, He's what's he going to do? <laughs> He's got to get the king out of danger, and then the the uh, the black knight just finds new new threats. He's, now you're attacking this knight. What's white going to do? Uh, you know, knight b1. You know, ouch. I mean, this is just black can just if anything retreat the queen and and find a way to to uh, keep the attack alive. Queen c5, queen e7. Queen e7 looks good. It's threatening to go to f6 check. And what is what is uh, what is what does white do against this move? 
you know, is Rook's under it? Well, Rook's not under attack, but the threat is to check on on f6. Well, oh, oh, we have this, so I don't know. It just Queen c5 is is good. It uh, it's got its own ideas. White just got black just crushing white here, and he's two pawns ahead. Well, you know, he's only one pawn ahead, but. I don't see how white defends this, but it's something for the players to look at. Anyway, let's go back. So he he guarded the pawn and offered a queen trade, and white took. I guess he just felt too much pressure, and so white has some glimmer of hope if he can win that pawn on d4, but it's not going to happen. That pawn just becomes a pillar of strength, and and uh, finally. Black tries something to get his rook into play, but that just costs him another pawn. And white, uh, black has resources here. He just shows them, put the knight in there anyway, chase the rook out. And although black won his pawn, look at that. Look at this knight. It's just, it's just killing white. And we can deal with the bishop and get it on a better square here easily enough. There's plenty of them. Okay, so bishop h3. Now you're threatening to come behind and and munch pawns. So. And yeah, this is good. Now you're threatening to win the knight because it's a pin. So white has to deal with that. And that pawn on d3, it's just it's just suffocating white. He can't can't he can't even approach it. And so black just comes back and and battens down the hatches, covers f7. And how do, well, how does white proceed here? His king can't approach the pawn. His bishop could go to c4, I suppose, but. But uh, white black has a reply for that. It's just well, hello. You know, you're not. You will not have that pawn now. Well, let's see. Knight f2 doesn't work. You just shove it. Up, shove it a little further. I guess. Let's see. Knight f2 is that what he played? No. But okay. Let's look at knight f2. Attacks the bishop. Well, you can't play e2. Maybe that's a good move. Uh, gotta stop. And I thought I covered that earlier when I was looking at it. Got to deal with the bishop. Then put it on g2. Nothing wrong with. But then you drop your pass pawn. Uh, hmm. What do you do here? What does what does White do? Okay, I'll take a moment and just. Because I thought I, I looked at this and I thought I covered. It. I've just forgotten it. And I don't care if these things don't, aren't unprofessional because they're not. They're very professional. We always have to stop and figure things out when we play. Analysis doesn't ha uh, in a video does not have to be perfect because it's all about you thinking. I'm giving you the ideas to think. So let's let's just take a moment here. What does what does Black do? What are his candidate moves? Let's start with there. Okay, we can uh, the bishop is loose, so we've got to deal with that, right? We can deal with it by protecting it with knight g1 or by moving it. If we push pawn to d2. We drop the knight, and we get and uh, we get the knight back. So let's look at that. Okay. If anything, White has King C2, and or even Knight D1, but I think King C2 is fine. But let's just uh, let's just take the knight. Now Black's giving up a pawn here. Oh wait, you don't get it back. He's covered it. Okay, so. Pawn e2 doesn't work, so where are you going to put the bishop? Uh, if you put it on f1, you're stepping into a uh, a pin. Now the knight's pinned. What does what does black do? Okay, let's back up. So where else does the bishop go? E6. Okay, let's put it on e6. This might uh, do the trick. But then again, it might not. Oh, you, you, oh, wait. There's a new point. If he takes the pawn with the bishop, the king comes up to g7 and the rook's trap. Maybe that was it. So let's go here and here. Now, white still can't approach the uh, the pawn. So what happens if he takes this off? Okay. What does black do? Okay. What black does is 
He just doesn't have enough with D2 here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'd rather waste time and dump this video, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to, first off, let's, he, his clock went, went up four, 14 seconds, so he spent uh, 20, 20, uh, no, 31 seconds on the move, not enough time. I'm going to cheat, something I never do. Let's put the computer on and let's see what ha what the computer does if we play knight f2 and see how much I'm missing. Okay, I've got a little lag, so there it is. Okay, it shows... Oh, we just attacked the rook first. Okay, by attacking the rook first, we're driving it, we're driving it out. So take my, take my bishop, I'll take your rook. So it's giving e5. Okay, and that... But e5 clears the square for the bishop, and that protects the pawn. So let's put the rook somewhere else. Let's put him on. Uh, let's put him on b6. Now, what does black do? Okay, I've got a little lag, so it's going to take it a while to catch up. So we still have to deal with the bishop. We still have to deal with the threat on the pawn. But I, I, I can't believe that. KW could could have analyzed this uh, position out. I mean, I'm I'm having enough trouble trying to solve it. Why is it uh, not answering? Come on. Like I say, I have lag. It could take a while here. Well, we're waiting for it to to show us what does Black do. The bishop is still loose. Okay, now it goes to g2, and there's a difference. The rook isn't guarding it anymore. That's the difference. But at least maybe. Uh, white gets rid of that dangerous pawn. It wants to play knight takes d3. That was what I was worried about. And now it's giving rook d4 and then b3. And black plays bishop takes f3. And white cries. His, all his pawns are coming off. Okay, so it's kind of a tactical continuation. But I can't believe that KW saw it because he spent so little time on the move. Instead, B4 is an impulsive move. He says, I have a pass pawn. I've got to push it. And i got a clear square for my king, although it's not clear how the king is still going to approach. Uh, C3, C2, and C1 are all covered by the knight and pawn. And now king G7. Okay, so now uh, here and uh, black's, black's just crushing white, you know, just pick up another pawn, just like in the analysis. Let me get rid of this computer analysis. I'm not looking at it. Okay. Uh, Bishop e6. Uh, white has two pawns left. Black now has four. The pass pawn on d3 is still there. There's really no hope. Now threatening to come into the seventh rank. Finally get that pawn going. Yeah, obviously white didn't even consider knight f2. He wanted to run his pawn, and he couldn't have. You can't make a good plan if you don't take your time. And if White had to spend 35 minutes on the move, he could have done it and still had a 4-1 uh, to one time advantage over Black. You know, for crying out loud, guys, this is standard chess. Take your time. And even though White's got that menacing pawn, it's it's stoppable. And that's what Black's going to do. He's going to stop it. And... Now the king's even farther away from the pass pawn. And the black knight dominates the white knight. The pass pawn on d3 is still there. And white just got nuisance value here. Now the pawn goes farther. Why not? <laughs> it's one move away. And there black hung onto his pawn. Well, and this is, this is kind of nifty here. It basically says... Uh, I want to trade your knight, and if uh, and White uh, can't push his pawn here, he'll it'll lose to knight takes rook, and he has to trade and go into a loss to a rook and pawn ending. And even though White can take on d2, he's going to lose his pawn on b6. And by the way, Black is threatening to take on b6, and but he does it the other way. He makes the queen first. And this is clearly one for black. Uh, the white king is hopelessly shut off. And black will just march his king and his two pawns up the board. And there's nothing white can do about it. Nothing. 
just chase the rook and every time he chases the rook the rook just runs farther away from the king and white wastes more time and those in the interim those black pawns start rushing there it goes and like I say bring the king up run the two pawns and why is white playing on I just bring the rook back again let white chase that uh, chase it again and white finally realized it's fruitless and resigned well it was a terrific game for black uh, not a perfect game you know I had some questions I mentioned about the knight c6 idea and maybe e5 could have been played a move early and maybe knight d4 was risky but uh, that's on Truxton to sit down and analyze it and and uh, learn more as he does okay I thank everyone for taking the time to look at this look at this with me and I uh, look forward to make another video for you soon oh by the way if you're going this far some of these videos now are taking longer I always wanted to make them 15 minutes and now I'm getting in in in, in uh, raptured with them and I want to spend more time on them and that's just me I, I would like to spend more time but the videos don't have as many views as I would like so uh, I'm gonna spend more time and just because I want to maybe that maybe that will help I don't know uh, well anyway it's a whole other story. Again, thanks so much, and I'll make one for you soon. Take care. Bye.